Kanu State Government detrones the 14th Emir of Kanu, announces Amino Adobayaro as his replacement. And the anti-social media bill threatens to become a law as the Nigerian Senate holds a public hearing on the proposed bill despite public outcry against it. Even as Bishop David Oyedepo describes Buhari's administration as the worst in the history of Nigeria. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Now, the 14th Emir of Kanu, Mohammed Lamido Sanusi II, has been dethroned with immediate effect for total disrespect to lawful instructions from the office of the governor. This was announced by the Kanu State Executive Council, chaired by Abdullahi Ganduje, the state governor. This comes barely three months after Ganduje stated that 35 civil service organizations sacked for his sacking. It is also barely a week after Kanu State House of Assembly received a fresh petition to probe the Emir. With me in the studio to have a conversation on um, this is Najib Bello, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Felicity, for having we me. We also have joining us via telephone, Gimbar Kakanda, Political Analyst. Thank you for joining us. All right. Can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Okay. I was saying thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, it's nice joining you. Okay, uh, let, me, let me start with you, Najib, your reaction to this announcement, not only of the detriment of Sanusi, but the enthronement of uh, Bayer. Um, the thing is that uh, from early this year, when Ganduje won his elections, it was already clear to a lot of people, especially in Kano, that um, Sanusi Lamido, earlier last year, early last year, from the first quarter of last year, it was clear that um, it was either Ganduji left or Sanusi left because Sanusi had made announcements prior to the elections that people should not vote in Ganduji because of those Gandola incidents, him collecting money in videos and all of that thing. So when he won the elections, people knew he could not allow Sanusi remain. So there was a point in time, in fact, I was in Kano that period, where he swore in three new emirs, mm -hmm. you know, and give them different um, mm -hmm. emirates to rule, breaking off the Kano emirate into a few pieces. At that point, I knew something was going to happen to Sanusi, and also the, the, the laws, the rules for the emirs, the new emirs, was that they could rotate them. So I felt what he was going to do. I knew that Adobayaro, Amino Adobayaro was his favorite, and he's related, of course, to the last emir. So I felt that what he wanted to do was he would rotate the emirs and put Aminu from Bichi, he would bring him to Kano and maybe rotate Sanusi to Bichi or somewhere else that will make Sanusi quit. That was what I thought his plan was. So but you're basically I, saying this is a witch hunt? No, of course, it's been, it's been on for almost a year, more than a year now. It's, it's been on. But let's look at the, his immediate replacement and of course, um, um, what you say. He has been removed, not because of maybe he broke the law. Mm, they are accusing him of disrespect. He is, he, he, to, disrespect, to which a disrespect is also part. Of, he did break the law that was mm, enacted mm, last year. Okay. But you're saying now that it is a witch hunt. Yes, I am. Clearly, it's, it's, it's there. He, he challenged the governor just days before the elections. He called on people publicly to vote against um, Ganduje. And when Ganduje eventually won the elections, he knew he was going to do something about Sanusi. His supporters said it that he was going to do something about Sanusi. And it's been on since then. I didn't even know it would take so long. I felt maybe by the middle of last year, <laughs> Sanusi would be gone. I just felt they would rotate the emirship and Sanusi would not be satisfied being Emir of Bichi and he would retire or something. Okay, I'm told but, we have Gimba on the okay, line. So yes. let's uh, see if we can talk to him now. Gimba, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. All right, thank you very much for um, staying with us. Quickly, your reaction yeah, it, to the announcement, not only of the detronment of Sanusi, but the enthronement of Bayero. Uh, 
Um, like, okay, a lot of us, a lot of actually, uh, thought is coming because if you if you look at the handwriting on the walls, there is an apparent uh, reason to suspect that Abuja is definitely involved in the deployment of the area. The reason I'm saying this is if they are interested in intervention, you know, like it couldn't have reached this extent. So the fact that this escalated to the extent that they had to be uh, destroyed, you know, imply that, you know, there are some vested interests in um, in any of And also, the reason for uh, for the choice of uh, viral phone is very clear as well. They know viral was a popular area, and having in and thrown means that there is less risk of an uprising. There is less risk of protest among the commoners in Kami. So yeah, it was a politically calculated move by the governor. And to be very honest with you, I believe, and I believe a lot of people think along the same line, that the area is just an errand boy in a grand scheme of things. Okay, he, he, they're, they're saying, or rather, you are now saying that the part about the government saying that Sanusi um, refuses to attend um, government functions, does not obey the laws, and all of that were just trumped up? Um, all of the... Like, like this, from what we are looking at, we knew when the problem began. It didn't begin with the Sanusi going against the established law in Kano. It began because Emir Sanusi has refused to legitimize some of the government activities. So that is the big problem here. Sanusi has set himself apart as, a, uh, as not just a government critic, but also as a, as, um, as a conscience of the society. He has been calling attention to some of the dysfunction in our society. And the elite, he said the ruling class, find that very uncomfortable. It's not just about Kano. It's about Nigeria as a whole. The political establishment as a whole are not interested in having somebody who is so vocal, who is so important, who is suitable in class, or calling the shots from that zone. All right, let, let me ask you, Najib. Um, there, there's something I want to quote from the statement that was issued. It said the removal was reached um, in order to safeguard the sanctity of the culture and tradition as well as the religion and prestige of the Kanu Emirates um, built over a thousand years. Is this a good reason enough? Or do you still stay with your argument? No, that no it's, not, it's not good enough reason. But like Gimba said, one of the things about Sanusi, which that statement clarifies, is Sanusi is trying to modernize the, the royalty of Kano. He's trying to enlighten people on some new things and new ways of doing things. He's talking about women empowerment. He's talking about educating the girl child. He's talking about, in fact, when I was in Kano and I talked to people, funny enough, there are people who really don't but like But did they him. know what they were getting with Sanusi when he was given the um, emirship title? It was not, um, what was it called? It wasn't Ganduje who was governor. They needed him at that point. They, so is it more, is, 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 does so, it have to really to do with his reformist nature or it has to that do is, with a putting disagreement that, no, see, with the state governor? It's a disagreement with the governor, but the governor is issuing a statement telling people that it's because his ways are different from the traditional ways. And citizens know that. Like Gimba said, they are going to do things that will make the people comfortable. They put Adobe, Amino Adobayaro, who is the son of Bayaro. In fact, when they, put, when they brought Amino Adobayaro as Emir of Bichi, I knew he was going to be the replacement for Sanusi because they were bringing him in because he's the son of the past uh, Emir, who everybody loved. You know, so also they are bringing this to calm the people down, say, because people are, are becoming wary of, of um, the way Sanusi is trying to change their culture and their tradition. I was in Kano during the swearing in of those three new emirs, and one of the things people told us that, in fact, one person specifically said, Sanusi once said that if anybody slaps his daughter, her husband or something, she should slap him back. And it's, it's strange to them 
Normally, an emir would say, oh, if your husband slaps you, go and beg his parents or go on. So, Sanusi is just, how will I say, it's not a lie that he's trying to change the traditions, the cultures, and the beliefs of the people. But it, is, it seems like he's doing it for the better. And that's not enough reason for you to remove him. Now, Gimba said um, Abuja may be involved. I don't think Abuja is interested in removing um, the emir, but I think what the governor had been looking for was some kind of permission, some kind of okay to say, you know what, just do what you want to do. But it is a personal thing between Ganduje and Sanusi Lamido. That's what I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to social media reactions in a bit, but I want to mm -hmm. ask about the rowdy session. I'm bringing this question to you, Gimba. The rowdy session at the State House of Assembly, when the matter was called, uh, remember last week there was a call for a committee to review or rather investigate allegations, uh, let me see now, of violation of culture, tradition, and religion uh, of the people. Were you surprised about by the rowdy session? Um... I I was I was surprised actually because I I was of the assumption that uh, what Kano had what Kano had was uh, was a rubber stamp legislature so I felt that they were all in the pocket of Gandhi so they wasn't going to be some of resistance to the removal of the emir so yeah when the session came up and then there was some sort of rowdiness I was I was really sure because uh, by my own prediction I said it was going to so going to be a smooth process for, for the, in favor of the governor. Okay, there, there's this thing about uh, him, um, a repeat of history. I think in uh, 1963, if I'm correct, um, his yeah. grandfather was removed and uh, banished from uh, Kanu. Uh, do you see um, Sanusi going without a fight? Um, it, it, you know... Uh, and your Sanusi's attachment to the throne is uh, something very strange for a lot of us because we felt he, uh, he was uh, more important than he was not even on, on the front, being a policymaker and also having influence in policy making process in Nigeria. But the fact that he saw the throne despite his potential meant that that throne meant something for him. So I don't think he would go down without a fight. I think he would definitely seek a legal. Uh, Okay. Um, there, there is also this uh, allegation at some point that um, he's getting the emirship was a sort of compensation for how loud he was during the Jonathan administration and the oil money um, um, issue, as well as who, his who removal as the CB, him? CBN, removing him as a CBN governor. No, so is who, it now that who that was compensating him? Over? There was nobody compensating him back then. Who would we say was compensating him? The people of the North. Not really, because it was kind of a lineage thing. And at the point where he became Emir, it was the same good luck Jonathan who was president. And if there was something wrong with his uh, placement or if people, some people were trying to use some kind of power to put him there for being vocal against Jonathan, of course, Jonathan would have opposed it. So I don't, I don't believe there's any kind of compensation. He was in line to be Emir, and that's, that's just that. Well, um, Gimba, what do we know about the new uh, Emir that was just announced? Um, to, be, to be very honest, I, uh, he, like, he was formerly... Uh, the Emir of Fadisi, one of the newly created uh, Emirates. Emirates. Other than that, I knew nothing about his antecedent beyond being the son of the former um, um, governor of Honestly, the same thing. Yeah, I mm -hmm. hardly knew anything about him till when he was sworn in as uh, the Emir of Bichi. And even though I search for information about the new Emirs, there was little or nothing I could find other than yeah. he was the yeah. son of the former. Emir. Emir. Mm. Okay, so what do you make of the, his, uh, they're, they're, just before we came into the studio, we had the, the um, former Emir now, uh, Sanusi, has been removed from his from palace and taken, banished um, away. You know, these are pre-colonial and colonial ways of doing things. Those are the kind of things we are seeing in our governments now, where you depose maybe an Oba of Lagos and you take him to Calabar. And all those kind of things don't exist in the world we are in today. So we need to be very careful of the kind of people that are in our government right now. 
we've long gone we, in what in what part of the world does that happen even in um, the uk where prince harry is saying he doesn't want to be part of the they're not banishing him he's choosing oh i want to go to the us or canada or wherever nobody is going to carry him and put, lock him up in uh, australia and say it's just it's insane and i hope people come out everybody the northern elite the sultan of sokoto and other people come out and say they will not tolerate this kind of nonsense it's really ridiculous okay but do, what expectation gimba are you expecting from sanusi at this point do you expect him to issue a statement or just take it all in before he says anything okay no i didn't get that and so what expectations do you have that Sanusi will yeah. respond um, in a way that will, you know, maybe please a lot of persons or show that he's going to fight on? Uh, okay, from the look of him now, I think the, the authority, uh, they had all their uh, strategies uh, that are better organized because I think Sanusi, too, even though he was aware of the forces against him, he wasn't prepared for this uh, sudden removal. And so, like, I think he had no chance to, like, fight at the... At but but, but let, me, let, me, let me interject, as, as Gimba. Let, that he was under lock. Gimba, I, I want to interject. When you say he doesn't have expectations, he didn't see this coming, this fight is not new. He's been having series of issues since 2017. Yeah, because there were, there were, there were people... So he never, I, I don't think he, he thought he would go to this extent. Because the governor, uh, for as much as he knew, must have just been blocking. Because, like, there were a lot of times he had some opportunity to, like, remove the email because he had the support of the legislature. But he didn't go, like, there was just an empty state. So he never executed them. So I don't think he was. You, like, I don't think you was prepared for the pertinence of this removal. All right. I, I'm told we have um, about a minute. So I'm, 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 you wanted to react quickly to that before I ask you to um, I was going to just um, elucidate on what he was saying. Is that It's not that he wasn't expecting to be removed, but the strategy that just played out right now, he wasn't prepared for it at this point in time. So he may not have a statement. He may not have people ready to, you know, come out and say, okay, this is what he's saying. So at this point in time, he didn't see this exact thing coming out right now. Uh, one of the reactions on social media is the fact that uh, Ganduje, his hands allegedly is not clean. Uh, when we talk about um, the bribery case, the yes. video that went yes. uh -huh. um, on investigated uh, yes. a, a few, um, just um, years ago, not so long ago. Mm -hmm. like, I think that was last year. Uh, it uh, was sometime last year or last two years ago. Ago. Yeah, two years ago, 2000. Yeah, so people are think, saying yeah. that um, he shouldn't have done what he has done and that they are condemning the action outrightly. Are you of that school of thought completely? Is there no justification for this move? There is no justification whatsoever. It's pure politics. It's politics because I know Sanusi has had issues over the years with um, the state government and everything because of his how vocal he is about issues of um, education and lack of development. But this, the current, the issue that made them remove him right now was beginning of 2019, towards the elections, the Kano State elections, where he said publicly that people should vote out Ganduje. I guess that's where we're going to have to leave it. Yeah. Thank you very much for You're coming welcome. on the program. You're welcome. And Gimbar, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Uh, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Too. All right. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the controversial social media bill continues to move forward in its journey to becoming law. Will it become law? Stay with us.